Hello and welcome to starting your biomedical engineering career. My name is Michal Gallagher and I work for Engineers Ireland and yet today we're delighted to bring you this webinar. Um, before we begin and before I hand it over to our fantastic speaker, just a quick uh, heads up for all those who are graduating that uh, look this can count towards your CPD, you can log your uh, continuous professional development and this is something you really should be keeping an eye on uh, as you graduate and you enter the workforce. Um, you can log into your membership profile and you can do that on the My CPD tab. And uh, yeah, just a reminder, you need, you need to declare 35 hours every year. Uh, for all the students who are joining us, um, just remember that you can get free student membership. And if you're graduating this year, um, don't forget to become a full member, uh, which is also free. Um, we have some fantastic rates at the moment for those who are graduating. And uh, in total, we give a 700 euro discount for the first four years of your career. And um, we do this because we're invested in your long term professional development. And if you have any questions about this, you can email us at membership at engineersireland.ie. And um, so, yeah, if you have any questions uh, during the webinar, you can use the chat function while we're live, or you can click on the link below to get the description for uh, asking questions in our forum. So, I'm delighted to hand it over now to Tara Kitty, a research and development engineer at Hook Bio Limited. Hi everybody. So firstly, thank you to Michal for having me here today. Um, I'm delighted to be here. So I'm just going to jump straight into it. Um, so just to start off uh, with a bit about me and my background. Uh, I'm originally from Galway. Uh, in terms of my education, I started my bachelor's degree in biomedical engineering in 2015 and I graduated in 2019. Uh, I then went straight on to do a master's degree in biomedical engineering at NUIG as well, and I finished that in May of 2020. So as with a lot of people, I'm sure it was a strange time moving on to online learning mid-semester, but we managed and we got through it. And so then in terms of work experience, as part of my undergraduate degree in NUIG, in third year, we had to complete an eight-month placement. So I did mine in Medtronic, and I was working in the manufacturing department as a manufacturing engineering technician. And then I was mostly working with balloon catheters and stents a little bit as well. Um, and I really enjoyed my time there. Um, and as a third year student, I had no prior engineering experience. So I was thrown right into the deep end and, and I learned so much over the eight months. So it really was a great experience. And um, it was definitely something that helped me in interviews as I was able to refer back to my time there and the things that I'd learned from working there. Um, I then started my in my current role as an R&D engineer in a startup company called Hook Bio in 2020. So I'll soon have one year done there uh, and I'm loving it and I'm learning so much and getting great exposure to all different areas within a company, uh, which is one of the perks of working in a smaller startup company environment and uh, getting that bit of extra responsibility. Um, so I wanted to talk about the project that I completed as my master's thesis, which was done as part of the BioInnovate program in NUIG. And so doing this project is what made me realize that firstly, that I wanted to work in research and development and in the design of medical devices, but also that I wanted to work in a startup um, where you get to have a real input and be involved in a bit of everything. So the project involved the design and development of a medical device and taking it through the full product development cycle from concept right through to commercialization. There were three main phases, um, identify, invent and implement. So everyone was split into three groups and each group had their own specific disease to work with and um, ours was COPD, uh, so chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. And we had to identify current unmet clinical needs in the areas of diagnostics, patient care, treatment and prevention for the disease by talking to consultants and um, doctors, nurses, and then obviously conducting our own online research. Uh, we then had to brainstorm different ideas and develop a novel final concept solution and a detailed design and carry out testing to prove that our concept worked. And finally, then we had to create a realistic development plan a financial plan, a business plan, and a proposed clinical trial to bring our device to market. And so this project was carried out over the full duration of the master's degree, so about nine months. And um, it was extremely full on, but it gave a great understanding of how the process of bringing a medical device to market in the real world actually works. And um, the best part about the project was that, although it was somewhat hypothetical, um, it was always treated as if it was a real medical device. 
and to some groups um, they even played with the idea of taking the ideas further and developing the device more in order to create a startup company themselves. Um, and it also gave me something to talk about in interviews again as we developed a lot of skills during this project and gained knowledge in areas of design, regulatory affairs, financial planning, clinical trials and business modelling. So these are just a few um, examples of different projects or assignments that I completed in college over the years. Um, some of you might have even completed the same ones or similar, but I definitely found the main thing that I was asked about in, in any interviews um, were the projects that I completed. Because as a graduate, you won't have much work experience, so I recommend including projects on your CV that are relevant to the role that you are applying for and that highlight the use of the required skills for that particular role. Um, so I knew I wanted an R&D role, so on my CV I included projects that were highly design focused and discussed them in great detail during interviews. Um, you could talk about things like the CAD drawings you did, the rationale behind your designs, what you were trying to achieve and how you did it, the materials you chose, um, any computational analysis like FEA or CFD um, or any testing that you did. Um, so I'm just going to give a brief overview of Hookbio, the company that I'm currently working in. So it's a startup company that spun out from UL and was founded in 2014 by Professor Mark Davies in Stokes Laboratories. And um, the company is currently developing microfluidic based technologies for drug screening in conjunction with 3D cell culture, with the aim of hopefully replacing the need for animal testing. So the technology, it's adaptable to a range of different applications, like disease modeling, drug discovery, drug repurposing, um, microbial screening, drug optimization. So it's very relevant in our current time with COVID and everything that's going on. Uh, so it's a very exciting technology and it's definitely a real honor to be able to be playing a part in developing a technology such as this. And um, Hookbio, they also won Enterprise Ireland's One to Watch Award uh, big Ideas Showcase in 2018, and also the National Startup MedTech Gold Winner Award in 2018. Um, in January 2019, Hookbio won 1.9 million euros in the first round of DTIF funding in collaboration with the Centre for Advanced Photonics and Process Analysis and NUIG. We currently have eight employees working in Shannon, which includes engineers, scientists and financial staff. Uh, the team have a variety of backgrounds, including microbiology, biochemistry, precision manufacturing, mechatronics, mechanical engineering, and of course, myself, biomedical engineering. Um, we're considered an essential service as we're carrying out important research. So the majority of us work on site full time, as a lot of the things we do is testing and lab work that we can't do from home. Um, but we do the odd day from working from home as well, depending on what work we have going on at the time. Um, so here are just some of the typical jobs a person with biomedical engineering degree might go into. Um, there are obviously more jobs than this, but these are just the main ones. And again, I can only comment on my own work experience. But in general, um, a quality engineer would work on ensuring the quality of a product and investigating any issues and non-conformances. Um, in regulatory affairs, you might be working with ISO standards and trying to obtain CE or FDA approval for your product or device. Uh, process engineers will be working on designing and implementing production processes and optimizing them. And a manufacturing engineer would work on facilitating efficient operations within the production area and, and ensuring that production goals are met. And then I'll briefly talk you through my own role as research and development engineer. Um, so my duties as an R&D engineer at Hook Bio vary from day to day, which makes things nice and interesting. Um, my day could consist of CAD work, research, testing prototypes, being in the lab, culturing cells, or 3D printing, designing tests. And um, so I have a short list here of some of the typical things that I might be doing. So there's a whole range of things. And the beauty of a small company is you kind of get trained up in a few areas. So I've recently been trained up on machining. So learning to use a mill and a CNC, which are things I would have no prior experience to before. And then also um, things like electronics, like coding or Arduino, which wouldn't have been my strong point in college. But now I've developed those skills much more since starting in this company. Um, so obviously for confidentiality reasons, I can't go into too much detail or show any pictures of our device. 
but an idea of some of the projects that I'm working on at the moment will be so I'm creating a rig to test different prototypes to examine fluid flow and mixing within a well. So I have to design, test and compare a range of different prototypes to see which ones work the best. So I'm experimenting with different flow rates to see does that have an effect on the fluid mixing. We're also now looking into CFD analysis to get a more accurate understanding of the fluid profile. Um, I'm also working on optimizing conditions for cell culture. So we are culturing cells within our prototype and exposing them to different conditions and then seeing how they behave. Um, so we leave them for 24 hours and then we stain them with a dye and image them under a fluorescent microscope so we can see if they are dead or alive. Um, so transitioning from college to work can be daunting, but I've actually found it to be a very nice transition and that by the time you finish college, you're definitely going to be ready to get stuck into a job and start earning money. Um, but since starting work, there's definitely been a lot of things that I've learned from college that I've been able to apply to the workplace. Um, so everything is definitely a bit more applicable than you think at the time. Um, I'd also recommend asking plenty of questions. Uh, people actually prefer when you do ask questions because it shows that you're interested and that you're eager to learn and that you're going to do the job right because they know that you've listened and understood what they've said. Um, I also would say that everyone starting in a new job will have to be trained in the beginning. No matter how much experience they have, when you're in a new company, everyone kind of does things differently. So everyone's always going to be the newbie at some point. So I wouldn't be nervous about that. And then finally, I'd say just be confident in all the knowledge that you've learned over the years in college and your ability to use it and put all the hard work to good use. Um, so yeah, um, thank you for listening. And if anybody has any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them. You can reach me on my email given at the beginning of this presentation. So thanks a million and um, thank you, Michal.